Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host Carolyn Schonefinger chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course some hidden gems, to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Welcome to the podcast. It may be the incredible scenery of mountains and lakes that attracts most visitors to Switzerland, but the country is also famous for its engineering prowess. In fact, Switzerland is home to many examples of pioneering innovation and design, many of which are world firsts, and both visitors and locals can experience them. Timekeeping and watches are perhaps one example of Swiss engineering that you're familiar with. But did you know that Velcro and the zipper were invented in Switzerland too? As was the World Wide Web. Where would we be today without it? Milk chocolate and Nespresso coffee capsules are two of Switzerland's culinary inventions. And it probably won't surprise you to learn that the world's first ski lift opened in Davos in December 1934. On this podcast, we're always talking about places to visit in Switzerland and the many fantastic things to do there, as well as the wonderful array of transport options that you can experience on your Swiss vacation. And this episode is no different. Today, I'd like to share with you some of the impressive world firsts and world record-holding attractions that you can see for yourself when you're in Switzerland. Now, I don't share this list so that you race around the country ticking off each and every site, but rather, if you are already planning to visit a particular region, you can keep an eye out for them and marvel at the expertise that has brought them to life. Let's start with a couple of world firsts. Mount Titlis is a popular mountain in central Switzerland, and the journey to reach the summit involves a cable car ride from Engelberg to Stand, where passengers then board the world's first revolving aerial cableway for the final leg of the journey to the summit. During the five-minute ride on the Titlis Rotair, as it's known, the cabin rotates 360 degrees, so no matter where you are standing in the cabin, you can witness the entire panorama. It's quite a surreal experience, but rest assured, the rotation is so smooth that you wouldn't even realise you were rotating if it weren't for the changing view. The rotating cable car operates all year round except for two weeks in November, and Engelberg is just 40 minutes from Lucerne, so it's very easy to reach. Another world first can be found at Mount Stanzerhorn, which is also not far from Lucerne. It was here in 2012 that the world's first double-decker aerial cableway started service. To get to Stanzerhorn, you start your journey in the town of Stans, where a funicular takes you partway up the mountain. You then change to the Cabrio cable car with its open-air rooftop balcony for the final section of the mountain ascent. You can choose to either travel inside the lower cabin or outside on the upper deck and breathe in that fresh alpine air on the 10-minute ride. Mount Stanzerhorn can only be visited from mid-April to late November, though, so do keep that in mind. Still in the Lucerne region, it's at Mount Pilatus that you can enjoy a ride on the world's steepest cogwheel railway. Opened way back in 1889, the Pilatus Cogwheel Railway traverses a gradient of 48% on its journey between Alpnachstad and Pilatus Kulm. Whilst the track remains the same today, which is incredible when you think it's been there for so long, new train carriages started operating in 2023. 
The Pilatus cogwheel train forms part of what is known as the Pilatus Golden Round Trip, a round trip from Lucerne that includes travel by bus, cable car, cogwheel train and boat, which is quite a unique experience in itself. And it's one that I highly recommend if you're planning a visit between late May and late November when the cogwheel train is operating. If you listened to episode 93 recently, you'll recall that the world's steepest cableway is due to open at the end of 2024. The first leg of the new Schilthorn Cableway will connect the valley station at Steckelberg to Murren and will overcome an altitude difference of 775 metres and achieve a maximum incline of 159.4%. So steep are the cables that the cabins will enter the valley station through the actual station roof rather than via the sides of the station building, as is normally the case. And whilst you're visiting the Shilton, you can also enjoy a drink, a meal, or or just take in the views from the world's first revolving mountain restaurant. The Shilton is located in the Jungfrau region, and it can be reached from either Lauterbrunnen or Steckelberg both of which are just 30 minutes from Interlaken. Yet another world record mode of transport in central Switzerland is the world's steepest funicular, and this connects the town of Schwiz with Stuz. The funicular, which opened in 2017, navigates a gradient of 47.7 degrees, or 110%, as it climbs up 744 metres in altitude. So that is some climb. The unique aspect about the cabins on this funicular are that they are round, and despite the steepness of the track, thanks to the automatic levelling of the cabins, you remain standing on a level surface at all times. So if you can imagine going up such a steep slope, you might expect that you would have to lean forward to try and stay um, on an even footing. But no, thanks to the great technology with these cabins, you don't. They do the, um, the adjusting for you. During the short journey, the funicular travels over two bridges and through three tunnels before it arrives in the holiday village of Stuz, which is around 1,300 metres above sea level. From Schwiz train station, buses take about 20 minutes to reach the Stuz barn. Uh, And one handy tip to know, travel on the Stuz barn is fully covered by the Swiss travel pass. But it's not only above the ground that the Swiss are great at creating world-class achievements either. The world's highest underground funicular uh, can be found above Sasfe, and it connects Felskin with Mittel Arlenen via a 1749-metre-long tunnel. The Metro Alpen, as it's called, um, actually holds two world records. It's the highest funicular and the highest subway, thanks to the fact that it runs totally underground. After you've ridden the underground funicular, um, up through the tunnel to the, the mountain summit, you can enjoy 360-degree views uh, from the world's highest revolving restaurant. Now, to get to Sasfe, uh, you'll find it in the canton of Valais, and there are regular bus services from uh, the town of Visp. Also in the canton of Valais, um, thrill seekers can cross the world's longest suspension bridge at Randa, which is near Zermatt. Now, this is one record holder that I'm not planning to experience for myself. As someone who has a fear of heights, walking across the Charles Kuanen Suspension Bridge, which is almost 500 metres long, that's nearly half a kilometre, and at its highest point is 85 metres above the valley below, that's not something that appeals to me, even though it apparently only takes about 10 minutes to cross. No thanks. The bridge can be reached via a medium level circular walk of 8.6 kilometres. So you do need to be committed. Um, You've got to do the the entire uh, circular walk as well as cross the bridge. But to get to Randa to start the walk, you can catch a train from Zermatt, uh, which takes around 15 minutes. And if bridges are your thing, a visit to the world's highest peak to peak suspension bridge 
at Glacier 3000 might appeal also. The Peak Walk is an elevated walkway which stretches for over 100 metres and it's only 80 centimetres wide. It's the only suspension bridge in the world that connects two mountain peaks and it offers views of the Mont Blanc Massif, the Matterhorn, the Monk, Jungfrau and Eiger. You know, the views from up there uh, would just be absolutely spectacular. To reach Glacier 3000, you can take a cable car from Col du Pion, which is around 35 minutes from Stad and 90 minutes from Montreux. Those of you who uh, travel between Ticino and central Switzerland on board one of the intercity trains will get to travel through the world's longest railway tunnel. The 57 kilometre long, yes, that's 35 and a half miles, tunnel, the Gotthard Base Tunnel, was opened in 2016 after 17 years of construction. And the tunnel can handle up to 260 freight trains and 65 passenger trains a day. Now, you won't see much for the 20 minutes that you're inside the tunnel, but this route takes a couple of hours off the journey time between Lucerne and the south of the country. Now, it's highly unlikely that you'll get to climb the world's longest staircase at Mount Neeson, if for some crazy reason you wanted to, that is, as it's used solely for maintenance checks on the adjoining funicular track, except for once a year when the stairway run is held. Built beside the Neeson Barn funicular track, there are 11,674 steps in total, and believe me, they are rather steep. My suggestion is to hop aboard the funicular at Moulinen at the base station for the half-hour ride to the Neeson Summit and leave the stair climbing to someone else. If you'd like to see the stair climbers in action, this year's run takes place on Saturday the 8th of June, and Mount Neeson is another mountain that closes over the winter. Uh, it will reopen for the season um, in late April and uh, the funicular operates until early November. To get to the valley station at Moulinen, uh, it's just 10 minutes by train from Spitz and around 50 minutes from Interlaken. Earlier, I mentioned three world-class modes of transport that you can ride near Lucerne. And if you're visiting the city itself, don't miss seeing the world's oldest surviving truss bridge and Europe's oldest covered wooden footbridge, which, of course, is Chapel Bridge. Built in the 14th century, Chapel Bridge once formed part of the city's fortifications and it spans the River Rus, connecting the medieval old town with the new town. If you're visiting during the warmer months, the bridge is likely to be decorated with flower boxes with colourful blooms spilling over, which is a, a really beautiful sight. But it's just as picturesque in winter when snow dusts the roof. On the ceiling of the chapel bridge, you can see pictorial panels which were added in the 17th century. And these panels portray scenes from both Lucerne's and Switzerland's history. Sadly, a fire on the Chapel Bridge in August 1993 caused much destruction and only the two bridge heads and the adjoining water tower could be saved. Of the 147 pictorial panels that were still in existence at the time of the fire, 110 of them were affected terribly, but you can still see some of them today. The bridge was rebuilt in a record eight months and it continues to be the most recognisable landmark of Lucerne. And finally, if you happen to be in Appenzeller land at the end of July or beginning of August, keep your eyes peeled for a glimpse of the world's largest Swiss flag. To help celebrate Switzerland's National Day on August the 1st, it's become a tradition to unfurl the huge flag, which measures 6,400 square metres, and weighs 700 kilos on the cliff face of Mount Santis. Passengers heading up the mountain by cable car get the best views of the massive flag. The valley station for the Mount Santis cable car is at Schwagalp, around 40 minutes by train from Appenzell and one hour from St. Gallen. Switzerland holds the honour of the world's densest public transport network, 
So it's not surprising that all of the world record innovations I've mentioned today can be reached by public transport. If you'd like to know more about travelling around Switzerland by train, head on over to holidaystoswitzerland.com where you'll find loads of articles about rail travel and the various Swiss rail passes that are available. Whether you choose to buy a rail pass and plan everything yourself or you'd prefer to book a rail package where tickets and accommodation are pre-booked for you, you'll find all the info you need to plan your dream vacation. The show notes for this episode will include a list of all the world record sites mentioned today. So if you'd like to check out one or two of them whilst you're on vacation, visit holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 94 for all the details. Thank you very much for joining me today. Next time, we're going in search of some of Switzerland's most beautiful waterfalls. Until then, tschüss.